When did you watch someone's sanity slowly deteriorate? I worked in a care facility for people who suffer from dementia. This was a very rewarding and enjoyable job but at times it could be confronting and sad, as you'd expect. One story that stuck with me was this lady who'd write in her booklet and always left it open. She didn't care to keep it a secret or anything but I would make sure to keep personal poses Zion's private as much as I could while cleaning the rooms. So I'd close the little book and put it in her desk where she could find it. It's something I could relate to. I have my own little books and enjoy writing as well and appreciate it when people respect my privacy. I wouldn't read the contents but I saw the phrases go from sentences, to repeated words, to scribbles. Eventually, she became too confused to put pen to paper. Opening and closing the booklet, carefully touching the paper, but she couldn't quite figure it out anymore. Eventually giving up. This really hit home to me as I knew how therapeutic it could be to organize your thoughts on paper. I write when I'm sad or overwhelmed. The thought of her being unable to when she might have needed the outlet still stings. My sister passed away earlier this year and she was sick for a long time. During the last few months you could tell that it was becoming harder for her to think and respond. Paradoxically it actually made her a lot nicer to me. We had never had a great relationship and I always believed she hated me but during those last few months she said very few unkind things to me. It was hard to know that the only time we ever really got along was right before she passed away. My sister also died five years ago and we didn't always get on either. I like to think that we both knew that petty differences didn't matter so overcoming them and making positive memories for each other were the greater good in the end. XX I was living elsewhere at the time but I heard about what happened to my friend. He was fairly normal. A little exceptional actually as he was being scouted to get sponsored for skateboarding, something he was very good at. He started acting really weird though. Things like opening his door just a bit when people came over and laughing at them. Throwing chairs and such around when at people's houses. Lying about things that were really obvious. Reading loudly from the Bible while wearing almost nothing outside in the middle of winter. Turns out he was schizophrenic. Last time I saw him was after I moved back and was living in a bad neighborhood. He was homeless as was his dad who was with him. He didn't even recognize me, just acted really scared that I was trying to talk to him. No one has seen or heard from him since then, I'm the last person to have seen him. That was 10 years ago. Watched my grandfather slowly sink into Alzheimer's. By the end he didn't know my name or his own. He was sad and angry and confused. I watched every week as he forgot a little more. Got a little more belligerent. A little more lost. Until one day I walked in and he started screaming that someone was there to rob him. It was the saddest fucking thing I've ever seen. I have such vivid memories of watching him and my uncles have such animated debates about politics and movies and sports. They used to play Risk until the sun came up listening to Sinatra. He would sit and explain every single play in a baseball game to me as a kid. He was sharp as fuck and the saddest and hardest part was watching the struggle on his face to remember. The frustration he felt. Like he was letting us down. I miss him a lot. I was in high school and my best friend went from a normal guy who we would smoke weed occasionally, listen to music and have fun. It went to this obsession with a girl that clearly has no interest in him. He would literally stalk her, try to win her over. At the same time, he wasn't keeping up with hygiene and went from a decent student to a poor performer. One day, he mentioned that he wanted to commit suicide so I told my parents everything that was going on. His parents were extremely well educated but weren't doing anything about his behaviors. My parents talked to his and they took it serious after hearing about the thoughts of suicide. He was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Nearly 40 years later, he still doesn't look the same. Really sad situation. I still miss him. I watched my ex-wife slowly spiral down and I didn't even realize it. She was never really stable and had a family history of mental illness. Apparently she started cheating on me and never had the strength to tell me or get a divorce and the constant lying and being on edge that I would find out at any minute really got to her, this was over the course of a year. Towards the end she would rock every time she sat and bit her nails till they bled. 
Currently she is maxed out on a host of meds and it takes everything she has to got to work as a janitor and come home. Her father is her guardian and helps her pay bills and stuff. She often denies past events or alters them if they were unpleasant, she is very adamant that they are real. Her father broke down and told me this a month ago and actually recommend that I not encourage our kids to visit her, I would never prevent them from seeing their mother. So in the course of, of five years she went from a fit dental hygienist with a promising career and host of friends to an overweight janitor with no friends who can't even pay her own rent or buy groceries. I do admire her for going to work every day and trying. My wife died of cancer three months ago. There were serious metastases to the brain, a baseball, a pair of golf balls and some other smaller pockets of disease. My wife was an intellectual badass. Held a doctorate, played concert piano, and had an uncanny ability to make correct political decisions. Badass. In the 8 to 10 weeks leading up to her death, she slowly lost her ability to speak and perform executive functions, sometimes in very interesting ways. The one I remember most was when she wanted a bowl of cereal. She had all the steps correct, but they were performed in the wrong order, so she poured the milk directly on the counter, then got a bowl, then turns the cereal box upside down, it was still closed, then got confused because she couldn't find the opening of the box, it was no longer at the top, all the while milk was dripping on the floor. Terrible and fascinating. By the end, she couldn't feed herself because she couldn't remember where her mouth was. In the last two weeks, all she could do was cry like a three-year-old. I miss her terribly. It was not really all that slow but I watched my mother slip from genius-level intelligence into a drooling brain-dead shell within six months when she died from CJD. It was the worst thing I have ever seen, and I have seen the terrors and atrocities of war. My, ex, best friend over the course of this past year has gone from a normal, well-adjusted woman who held down a full-time job and a very nice apartment to constantly being online and talking about how humans are just slaves to an alien race that lives on Mars and how reality doesn't exist and if she died none of it would matter because reality doesn't exist. I don't talk to her anymore because if I said anything in opposition, she would lose her shit on me, very different from the kind, compassionate woman I was best friends with for four years. I miss her every day. Disclaimer. I know she's doing well, she has a great familial support system and other friends that agree with her beliefs, I just couldn't be one of them anymore. We can't force someone into help if they don't want to be helped. My dad died of cirrhosis when I was 17. He was 45. He was, by all counts, a good father. Caring. Loved exposing us to wonderful art and hilarious comedies. But he drank. A lot. About a year before he passed is when I noticed a change. Paranoid delusions. Talking to people not there. I'd come home from school to find Mormon missionaries that he had let in. Sometimes Jehovah's Witnesses. They were all taking advantage of him and I'd kick them out every time. He was a staunch atheist. Then the violence started. Burst into my room just to punch me in the face while I'm sleeping. He tried to light the apartment on fire twice. On my 17th birthday he called my so a cunt to her face and threw his drink at her. We ended up in fisticuffs again. He also just looked insane. Yellow skin. Yellow eyes. Super skinny. He couldn't walk so he had two canes that he used violently. He died that year the summer before my senior year of high school leaving me homeless but I was in the best place I could be. He was gone and never coming back. It's been 23 years and I hate to think of the life I would have if he never died. My mom started going to online blogs and web radio shows about ghosts, aliens, conspiracies, and took it all at face value. I saw my normal mom turn into a complete, gullible ignoramus in a matter of months. Nobody could talk to her without her bringing up FEMA death camps, potential economic collapse, aliens, antivox, or Obama signing more executive orders than any president in history. Her friends thought she might have a brain tumor. She didn't. She did have cancer she was hiding slash ignoring that ended up killing her BC she thought cancer wasn't real. This is what happens to lonely people that are looking for a connection, they'll believe anything just to feel that they are a part of something. It was very sad that she was so unbearable the last couple years of her life.